time. So uh, get us started, man. You got to introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Tell us first, last name, and tell us where you're from. Okay. Um, I'm Priscilla Paredes, and I'm from Chicago. All right. Now, Chicago's a big place. So you can't just say Chicago like everybody, you know, where that's at. So yeah. Yeah, sad of time. Um, I, I moved around a lot. That's why. So, like, you know, like, my family is originally from, like, the southeast side. Like, the neighborhood is legit called South Chicago. But when I was seven, I had moved to the north side. And it was only me and my dad had moved to the north side. So my whole family stayed over there. So we had moved to Albany Park until I was about 15. But on the weekends, we'll still be back on the southeast side. So it's like I felt like I had both sides of the city yeah yeah so what was that like right so he's like man so that's two different you're right two different completely different yeah styles. you went to you went to chicago public schools or what did you what did you go to yeah okay. yes yeah. so even in um like younger like i went to marsh like that was an elementary school that was cps and then once i moved to the north side i went to elementary school and high school both cps as well gotcha. what was that like navigating like what was it was it like life was easy for you or like was it um when I look back, a lot of the times, like I had, I talk about it in my interviews, like CPS, like just looking back on it, like there were like a few teachers that would like challenge me to like do more. And like, it just showed that they really cared and like, there's more to life. But honestly, throughout elementary school and high school, like it was kind of easy. Like I knew how to kind of finesse, like I could, like, I don't have to do my homework as long as I did like the big test and the presentations like I knew I was gonna pass and like still be on honor roll like honestly I barely ever did homework and what I could remember is by my senior year through the second semester they were like oh you only have to come to school half the day because you already have all your credits to graduate and I was like I don't even know how I did it but I did so I started school at 12 30 when everyone started at 7 30 so once I was going to looking for college I was like you know what I can't go to Harold Washington or daily because I was like I'm gonna do the same thing like I was like I know it's gonna cost more money but like I kind of want to lock in and like really challenge myself because I was sick of doing that yeah so then all right so you graduate high school and like all right, what what'd you want to be when you grew up like what was your uh, what was your thing like what did you honestly I didn't even know I was just like I don't know what my interests are like it was just hard to choose. So at the time I was on a poetry team in school. So I was looking at Columbia College and I seen they had a poetry um, major. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just start off with this to go in there. Um, but once I got in there, I was like, yeah, this is definitely not what I want to do. This is more just of like a hobby and like that's it for me. Um, so I was kind of looking into other things and looking at my other interests. So I had came across fashion business and the fashion was more just like of my creative side. The business part is really like what I wanted to learn, like, you know, just legal things. So I got into that and I graduated in 2018 with a bachelor's. Okay. All right. Graduated Columbia 2018. Yeah. All right. Congrats. Congrats. And so then what? All right. So it was like, man, it, it was it like a whole bunch of jobs lined up for you? Like what happened? No. So when, um, like kind of just talking to teachers and like seeing other people's like past experiences, like graduating with fashion business. It was either really you kind of start your own like fashion line, which is scary and like you need money <laughs> um, or you kind of just go into retail stores and work your way up to be a manager. So at the time I was working, I had got in at Nike and I was like, all right, this is cool. This is more of like my vibe. But a few months in, they kind of closed down for four months for remodeling. So they let us know like 30 days notice like, hey this is what's happening. And like, just throughout being in Nike too, I was just like, you know what, I can really make something happen, but it's going to take years to even get up there. And that was already kind of discouraging me. So just with knowing like a 30 day notice, I had a friend who was a manager at another retail store, but it was more of a wine shop. And I was like, look, I'm desperate. I got to pay rent. Like I'll go ahead and interview for this. Um, and I started working there and I spent three years there. Three years, so you you like stuck three in years. Man, ugh, yeah, I was stuck life, in retail. Boy. Yeah, man. Yeah, it gets you sucked in. Yeah, yeah, man, man, man. So then what? So right, you stuck in retail, like man, you navigated at this point was like you transitioned from one place, one retail place to another. Then what? Happened? So I was in. It was called Fox Shop. I was there, and after like a year and a half, I just knew like, yeah, this ain't for me. I'm already kind of growing in the company though. I started as a store team member, and then I got moved to a supervisor and. Of course, I was going to take it because that was an extra few dollars, you know, every hour. So I'm like, of course, like, I'll do it. 
um, especially just seeing my supervisors then I was like oh I could do that like I'm already doing half of what you do so it's nothing and then COVID hit and then you know kind of COVID the guidelines kind of started changing so I was looking for work because I was like this is definitely not what I want to do like everyone I work with is great but just kind of growing in the company I was just like honestly I don't have a passion for this company when I started there was only five stores when I ended there was 15 stores so I was always there in between all the transitions of the new stores opening and I seen they were going into more of a restaurant feel and I was like yeah no I can't keep up with that so I had gotten in contact with one of my friends who was in tech because I had a lot of questions about tech just you know with COVID a lot of new podcasts and YouTube channels coming up so I was just hearing about different things and just you know the word tech is just so vague it can't even go into how many categories and all that. So I kind of was talking to him about it. And he was like, I did this program rework a few years ago. He's like, but back then, like my group was what, 10 people, maybe he was like, you should look into it. Did that the same day, waited for a response, was hit up like two days later, and just kind of waited out till then. So we started. Yeah, yeah. So boom, so then you you, you man, you apply, you get in. And uh, what right. was it like? Like, what was, what was the experience like? And you and it no one, you like, <laughs> Oh, it's scary. How you say that again? It was what? It was scary. It was scary, but in a good way. So, like, just like with being in CPS, and like, you know, I knew I was finessing my way through school. Like, no one was really challenging me the first day of rework. I was like, oh, I can't sit in the back of the classroom and just do what I do to, you know, kind of just get by. So it was like all the things I kind of didn't learn back then, I was forced to like come up and present and open my mouth and talk and just on the first day. So I was like, okay, like this is scary, but it's good. Like, you know, a lot of people don't like change. So that's what, that was a big change for me. Yeah. Yeah. What was your, if you had like two big takeaways, what would be your, your two big takeaways from, from the program? Being comfortable with being uncomfortable and being more resilient. Yeah. So. Dope. So what you what you doing now? I'm in tech. I got I got a job through rework. Kind of helped me do that. Yeah, I'm working at Schedule Engine as a SDR right now. Dope, dope. And when you think about like when you think about what you do now and the money you make now in comparison to like the the retail jobs that you had back then, like like what's the you know what's is there is there a comparison? Some people be like, oh, I'm in retail. I don't know if I could do that or I, they can't see them because you're right. Tech is broad. They can't see themselves. Like, like, talk about your life. You got, you got a different lifestyle. Is it the same? Yeah. yeah. Go talk about um, it. So I've, I've been in um my position now for at least six weeks and I could just feel the biggest shift, like being in a company that like, they kind of really take the time to get to know you. Not saying that other companies didn't know me, but it's just like, it's just a different environment. And it's honestly more of that too. Like, People really care and like, it's just, yeah, it's just really different. And the money is a hundred percent different. Like it's something about you. You're more appreciated in this position. So you want to work harder and like, it's not easy. I'll tell you that. Like I'm very uncomfortable a lot of the time, but like, it's a good uncomfortable. Like you feel like you're working your way up and like you're making progress and others see it. And that's that I'm just six weeks in, imagine six months. Like I just know that there's growth and it's available to grow. Like I, I can't be in retail again where to become a supervisor, they're not gonna say something about my progress until like a year and a half. They're gonna be like, oh, you know, we noticed we're a week in at this job. They're already like, okay, this is what's good. This is what you could work on. And like, they're asking me more of my opinion and they're really listening. Like, you know, what do you feel overwhelmed with right now? Where at retail, it's kind of like, nope, we're fast. We got to go. We got to move. Like you really get to take your time and something about that just makes you want to move faster. Like you're able to kind of grasp and like move. Oh, dope. So now it's like, man, if you had to I had two questions left, right? So if you had to tell like the younger version of you, right? Like, man, it's retail, just got out of the retail. It's somebody that's living your life experience you know, three years ago, uh, and they, they going through it, man. What, what would you tell that? What would you tell that person? I would definitely tell them about rework <laughs> for sure. I'll be like, there is options out there for you. You know, it's not just, um, not trying to discredit school at all. Like everything is an educational experience if you really look at it, but definitely there's many options out there and 
you know, tech may seem like, oh, technology and like, so no, you're not really getting into that. It, this kind of field kind of helps you like in everyday life, like talking all the time, like just really getting better at communication. I've noticed that like being on the phones, it's like, wow, I just want to be a better communicator in everything I do. Families, friends, work. It's just everyday skills that you could learn. So if I could tell my younger self anything, it's don't be afraid of change. Like, don't read a job description and get discouraged and say, man, you can't do that. You're not cut out for that. Because most of the time, these job descriptions just use bigger words that mean the most simple thing. So just really to kind of simplify the things that are going on in your brain and don't get overwhelmed. Like, as humans, we just overthink everything and you don't have to. Like, you just have to kind of talk it out. So, so, so. so now, you know, we got this, this mantra, we work, get this work, right? Say it all the time. I know what it means to me when I'm like, man, I use it a lot. I use it on companies. I use it on candidates. I mean, I'll be like, oh, we got to get this work. But like, what, what does get this work mean to you? Get this work means to me, it's like, do your best. Honestly, that's what, for me, it means like, get up every day, know you do your best. And not every day is going to be an all-star day for you. You know, you're going to have your down days, but knowing that you're still trying even though you're having a hard day like I did my best and knowing that that I still tried like I'm gonna get this work one way or another <laughs> like love it, definitely love it. you just gotta keep trying so do your best good stuff man do your best and get this work good stuff girl look that that's it painless <laughs> right painless painless